the, the luxury cars, the more sporty ones, where the uh, consumer is willing to pay up, will certainly be driven by the NMC chemistries. And Talking batteries here with Henrik from Iridis and Henrik. What are we seeing here on the chart? We're seeing uh, four different uh, cathode chemistries that are currently uh, in the market and probably even developing more into the market. The figures really show the uh, different parameters of how they uh, of their capabilities within how much capacity can we store, how much power and the voltage can be used, how stable are they through their life, what are the material costs, what are the safety parameters of of the battery and in the in the last one up left is really how fast can we charge the batteries what about the different use cases that we see here henry i mean starting with the mnc that's most likely what we're going to have in a, in a tesla for example or that we previously had in the first generation of tesla um, lfp or lmfp is what we're seeing in china especially with uh, cars for urban areas uh, with the uh, where range is not key um, with smaller battery capacities. And what about the lower two, um, the LMMO, for example? What use case uh, do you see there? Well, let's then start with the lower case, the uh, the, the, the uh, manganese-rich one you mentioned there. We've had Volkswagen last year came out on their battery day and say they will do a high manganese battery because it's better than the iron-based LMFP or LFP because they can get about 20 to 30 percent more energy into them without getting into too much trouble on the uh, on the cost side. I think uh, that the uh, manganese rich uh, chemistries we will see a lot more of them and I think actually either the rich ones or the, the doped LFP or, or nickel ones, doped nickel ones on, on, on manganese we will see more and more because this is really the midfield of the whole thing. LMNO is not so much popular and, and the figure actually shows you why. It's not good on safety, it's not so good on fast charge, but it has very high voltage, which is a good thing because then it can really give off the power uh, very, very fast. And the cost side is is close to the LMFP. I think the LMFP and the rich manganese, and just to be safe here, I think when we talk about manganese rich, I hear numbers uh, from uh, up to 75% out of China, where if we talk LMFP chemistry, the manganese content is, 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 is probably in the neighborhood of 10 to 20. But it will be in the mid-market and lower market cars that we will see these chemistries. The, the luxury cars, the more sporty ones, where the uh, consumer is willing to pay up for uh, quality and uh, capacity, will certainly be driven by the NMC chemistries. And as we, if we look into what people think the next five years, this is uh, no different uh, today than, than it is expected to be in five years. Yeah, just to add a fact here on, on the range, uh, the average uh, German commuter drives uh, 35 miles, 50 kilometers per day. So the discussion about whether you need 400 or 800 or even 1,000 kilometers, which is like 700 miles of range for an EV is, uh, for most people, a theoretical one or a case that uh, applies twice a year when they drive uh, to Italy on vacation. But we're talking a lot about EV here. What about the other business cases? I mean, uh, energy storage, for example. Is that something where LMNO, for example, could dominate due to the cost advantage? I think uh, if we look into the other segments and if we take uh, battery storage, I imagine you are talking about these grid scale, uh, large stationary batteries. There I see two parameters being of importance. The one thing is the safety because it's going to be a permitting thing. This is either going to be out in the desert or out on, on, a, on a field or within populated areas. And in the populated areas, there will be a uh, unit permit from the local community and uh, blah, 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 even uh, signed by the fire department. So the safety will be the primary one there. But the second one, and maybe even the first one, is going to be the cost side. For that reason, I think the LMFP and even the sodium batteries that we hear about recently will be relevant because they have one disadvantage, they don't have energy density, but if you're in an environment where weight does not matter, size does not matter, it's not really of importance. If it's half a container or a full container in size, it's big enough for everyone to see it, but it doesn't really matter uh, for the user. But what it means, it can have a very, very uh, large impact on pricing if we take these cheaper chemistries. And they have upsides. It's 
not just a matter of price and security, but it's also a matter of the environment. We imagine that this will happen as either out in the fields to support the grid. And if this is a in a warm environment, sorry, the LFP chemistry will be the preferred one because that just fits very well into those temperatures. They don't work very well in cold temperatures where the sodium ones that we've heard about recently and will we be expecting to get online actually within the next uh, three to six months they will be working excellently in colder environments and the size of the thing as i said is not a problem because they are out in they're not a disturbance and we don't move them so weight is not a problem either